Welcome back everyone, it's Eric from Rare Candy. Here today we're back on PTCGO taking a look at another deck for the standard format. And today we have a Water Salvali GX deck we're going to be taking a look at. So Salvali GX came out all the way back in Crimson Invasion, and initially it did actually have a good bit of hype surrounding it whenever uh, the set was you know, coming up on the horizon at the time. But unfortunately, the card just has not quite been a tier one archetype. It has done okay at some events, but um, uh, it's kind of fallen off the radar, especially after we lost things like Max Luxers and some cards in rotation last year as well. But today we actually are going to be looking at a deck that's hoping to kind of rejuvenate it a little bit. Uh, thanks to some new cards from the Team Up set, most importantly, the new Water Memory card. So, of course, all the memory cards can augment Savali's typing and give you cool advantages, depending on the typing that you're using. So, now that we have Water Memory, we can actually abuse Aqua Patch on Savali GX and kind of overcome one of the deck's pitfalls without Max Elixir, is getting a Savali GX up and running in one turn, potentially. So, let's take a look at the deck and see exactly how it's going to be operating. Uh, we have a 3-3 Silvalli GX line. Just a quick refresher on this guy. 210 HP Stage 1. Has this ability. All of your basic Pokemon play have no retreat cost. Very, very nice. Especially because all of the basics we're playing in here have kind of clunky, like, three retreat costs. And this card is going to give them a lot more mobility. And also, basically, always gives us a free retreater to promote in between knockouts as well. Which is always uh, very appreciated in any deck. Uh, first attack, Turbo Drive for three colors, does 120, and you attach a basic energy from your discard to one of your bench Pokemon. So this is going to kind of help us stream attackers throughout the course of the game. Just a nice, like, two-shotting amount of damage that we have here. But then we do actually have a GX attack that will allow us to get a big one-hit knockout at some point as well. Uh, Rebel GX does 50 times the amount of bench Pokemon your opponent has in play. So just like the Dangerous Rogue GX we've seen on Lycanroc as well, but... Uh, so yeah, we are mainly going for kind of like the two-shot war with Turbo Drive, but thanks to some of the memory cards and also with Rebel GX, uh, we do have some ways at getting some big knockouts at some point as well too. Fighting Weakness, two retreat cost as well. So Savali is going to be, of course, the main attacker that we do have here in the deck, uh, but we do have some partner Pokemon for it, uh, various different water Pokemon. First of which, Volcanium Prism Star, fantastic card. It allows us to dump water energies into the discard pile with Jet Geyser. Uh, which is pretty nice to help us get those out of the discard pile with Turbo Drive and Aqua Patch. But also, it forces our opponent to switch as well. And also, Sauna Blast, fantastic attack. Uh, just another nice two shotting attack we have here. Three water to do 120 to each of our opponent's bench Pokemon. So, another, like I said, nice two shotting attack. Sometimes the 20 spread can also be relevant as well. Uh, we do have some other attackers here. We have one Articuno GX. So we're playing Articuno GX. This is going to be primarily for this ability, Legendary Ascent. Uh, whenever we play this Pokemon from our hand onto our bench, we may switch it with our active Pokemon if you do move any number of water energy from your other Pokemon to this Pokemon. So if we have a Savali GX in the active spot, you can throw this guy down, put it in the active, get free retreat. Uh, but also the other reason I'm playing this over something like Dawnwings Necrozma is because we have Cold Crush GX, which is actually really, really good against a couple of different decks that we have floating around right now. So first, a single water, discard all energy from both active Pokemon. So this is really nice, especially if you go against something like a Pikachu Zekrom, and they get a really quick Tag Bolt, or I'm sorry, a really quick Full Blitz, and set themselves up to, you know, uh, take like a big Tag Bolt knockout in the next turn. They have six energy. And, you know, if you're not quite developed to where you need to be to take a knockout on a Pikachu Zekrom. You can throw this guy down just for a single water energy, eliminate all of those energy out of play, and buy yourself maybe another turn or two before you really have to worry about getting hit again. So this GX attack is actually one of my favorites. I, I actually debatably use this more than Rebel GX, uh, but Cold Crush, really, really good attack. Ice Wing, also not too bad for Water Water Colorist is 130. Again, just a nice little two-shotting attack we have here. But the ability and Cold Crush GX are the primary reasons we are playing this. Uh, then from there, we have one Palkia GX. I wanted to kind of one, uh, I guess, more heavy-hitting water backup attacker that we have here. So I think you could play Lapras GX. I think that is also very valid. Uh, however, this list only runs when Choice Band, which makes Lapras a little bit worse because you do need Choice Band to hit a lot of relevant numbers. So if you maybe play two Choice Bands, maybe Lapras could be better. Uh, but Palkia seems nice, has a really good GX attack as well. 
Also good against those Pikachu Zekroms that are running around. Hydro Pressure, also not too bad. 60 plus 20 for each water energy attached to this Pokemon. So we can, you know, keep scaling this up larger and larger. Another reason I did commit to Palkia is because we actually can abuse double Colorless energy on Palkia as well. So zero advantage, five energy, kind of annoying, but since we do run double Colorless al already, it actually reduces that to four attachments, which is much, much better. Uh, next up, we have two copies of Tapaleo, of course, for Wonder Tag. Uh, also, we can make use of Energy Drive since we are a double Chorus Energy based deck. Just quick to point out. Uh, we have one copy of Magearna. That's going to be for this Change Clothes ability. Once during your turn before you attack, you may put a Pokemon tool attached to one of your Pokemon into your hand. So we run three different tool cards in this deck, and depending on you know what deck we run into, we might want to change some tools around and uh, you know maybe pick up those water memories that we have in favor of a choice band or a fighting memory or something like that as well. And then the last Pokemon, we have one copy of Absol, of course, for that Dark Ambition ability. That's going to be for all of those uh, Jirachi, like Zapdos decks out there. Make it harder for them to actually maneuver around their board. That's going to be the Pokemon line, guys. Looking at the supporter count, pretty standard stuff. Four Cynthia, uh, three Guzma, four Lily, one Erica. Nothing too fancy, like I said. Just a bunch of draw supporters and a couple Guzmas. Uh, a lot of the rest of the deck will look pretty similar as well since we're not playing Elmer or anything like that. Uh, we're playing three copies of Nest Ball in addition to our four Ultra Balls. We have a copy of Stretcher for some recovery. Of course, four Aqua Patch. This is going to allow us to get those water energies from our discard onto our benched water Pokemon. So sometimes we can power up a Savali GX out of nowhere if we have a water memory on it. Also, of course, to help power up our other back of water attackers as well. Uh, we have one copy of Adventure Bag as well. This was, I think, initially actually a second choice ban. But I was like, you know what, we're going to play Adventure Bag. This is going to give us a little bit more flexibility because choice ban, most of the time, actually isn't the best tool. Um, sometimes it, it does make a difference, but most of the time you would prefer your memory cards on your sub allies instead. So instead of a second one, I opted for Adventure Bag just to give us some flexibility uh, in terms of what tools we want to find. Uh, then three Acrobites, just to give us a little bit more digging power. You know, we are con kind of a combo-focused deck. We're going to be need Aqua Patches. We're going to be needing Evolutions, uh, the Memory Cards. So Acrobite is going to allow us to dig a little bit deeper on certain turns to maybe hit what we need in a given turn. Also, too, the Discard Effect isn't too bad because we can put Water Energies in the Discard Pile as well. Let's see, we have two Viridian Force. It's going to be our stadium of choice here. We can, yet again, it's another way we can dump water energies into the discard pile uh, to help get them in there at some point. So that's going to be the main reason we're playing this. Counter stadiums are just a really good thing to have, I think, in this format right now with all the different Prism Star stadiums floating around. And Viridian just kind of makes sense here. Uh, then from there, we just have our memory cards. We have one choice band, like I mentioned, just to give us a little bit of a 30 damage buff. Most of the time, like I mentioned, it's not the best, but there are certain situations, especially if you're able to sauna blast once or twice with a Volcanion. Sometimes choice band can set up knockouts. Like uh, if you do one sauna blast and you have a banded Silvalli GX, you can knock out a Lele with Guzma. So there are certain situations where it's useful. So I think it's still important to play one here. Uh, we also have two Fighting Memory, very, very important one right now in the current metagame. Lots of Pikachu Zekroms and, fi and uh, Fighting Week Pokemon running around like Zoroark as well. So we can just slap this down with Silvalli, take a big one-hit knockout uh, with Turbo Drive, turning an otherwise decent attack into a really, really good one. So very important, like, like I said, in the current metagame that we have. And then from there, two Water Memory as well. This is, of course, going to allow us to become a Water type on our Savali GX and be able to start using Aqua Patch on it as well. So those are going to be our tools of choice, but I definitely do think there are other ones you can include. Uh, Psychic Memory, I think, is one uh, that was that almost kind of made the cut in this list. Feel free to cut something for it if you want, but that will allow you to have a much better chance against those Lucarios that are running around. That is definitely going to be a card that is a big pain for the deck to overcome. So I definitely think that it is worth considering putting in a Psychic Memory into this deck as well. And then from there, we have four Double Colorless Energy and eight Psychic, I'm sorry, not eight Psychic, eight Water Energy to round out our list here. So yeah, guys, that is going to be our updated Savali GX deck we're going to be working with. Let's head into some games, and I'll show you how this deck looks in action. All right, guys, looks like we found ourselves a game here. Opponent's going to call the coin flip, and we did lose the flip, so not too exciting there, but let's see. Okay, we do have a pretty workable hand. This will be okay, I think, as long as our, um, you know, because we're going to nest ball. We're going to find a type null, 
then hopefully we can find a second one off of the lily but if we do that i think we're gonna be in generally decent shape we have energies ready to go and okay it's gonna be blacephalon hmm so I'm trying to think, you know, I think at a glance you might assume that we would just win because we have uh, type advantage, but you have to remember, Blacephalon actually can trade pretty well against most things, you know, even if, uh, you know, they are being hit for weakness, they still take one hit knockouts of their own. So we're basically going to be trading uh, one hit knockouts here. Uh, so, but I will say this, the resources they need to take a one hit knockout are going to be a little bit larger than us. So we'll have to see how this is going to go. And so we get let loose, we can, I think we ultra all, we get rid of the water energy and the tapu lele. From there we can get a type null, attach, and just Cynthia, I believe. So just taking a look, oh, we do have Volcanium Prism Start. That actually is like kind of tempting, but no, we should probably play it safe and just go for the type null here. It's probably going to be better in the end. So we do have both water memories and deck, that's going to be good. We do need those. We got our, uh, we have three aqua patches. So it didn't look like anything too, you know, ridiculous was prized there. And then from there, we can just go for a Cynthia. And we do hit a Volcanium Prism Star as well. That's nice. We can throw that down. We can Aqua Patch. We'll do that. Start setting that guy up. Sauna Boss is definitely going to be really good against uh, Blacephalon here at some point. And then from there, we can just uh, pass over to our opponent from there. So let's see how they are going to respond here. We're going to see a Mysterious Treasure. Get rid of a fire energy. So I'm probably going to assume we're going to get knocked out by this Blacephalon. They only have to get rid of one energy to take a knockout since they hit us for weakness. But that's actually fine with me. As long as they don't knock out our Type Null, I feel really good about the spot we're going to be in. Okay, so just a Cynthia. That is not a Guzma. I like seeing that. We're going to see Ditto come down. Now, if they do get out a low in Muck, that could be slightly annoying for us. Uh, but luckily, it does not show off Savali GX's ability. Okay, so they are going to knock out the Magirna. So who do we promote here? I guess just Volcanion has free retreat once we evolve. So that seems good to me. And we hit Nest Ball. That's really good as well. Probably just get another Savali GX. That seems good. Or Type Null, I should say. So we'll do that. And we could attach... I really don't want two DCEs on this thing, though. I might even just, like, hang on to the energy and try to hit a water instead. That'd be ideal. So we do. We can get the choice band down, I guess, on Volcanium Prism Star. I don't really think the choice band's going to matter in this match at all anyways. But here we can just Lily. And nice. So we do hit Verdian Force. That's cool. We can grab ourselves a water energy that way. So what do we do? We just get rid of the fighting memory. That seems good. Probably going to be a dead card here in this matchup. So we'll grab ourselves a water energy, saving that DCE. Uh, for the next turn. So we could bench the Lele preemptively and try to, like in case of a little muck comes down, but I'm thinking, eh, we might be able to just like take a knockout here, probably draw some prizes, it'll be okay. Like I think on their next turn, they're gonna have to, like, honestly, it's probably safer if we do. You can see I'm like a little bit torn here. What do we wanna do? But we're going to go for it just in case. Also, too, I think, yeah, I think actually a better reason to bench Lele in this situation, too, is because if they do have the return knockout on this uh, Savali GX, we're going to need to promote Lele, actually. Yeah, so this seems good. And the reason for that is because we're going to need to find a Savali GX and a couple Aqua Patches to get this Volcanium Prism Star up and running. So uh, Savali does not give itself free retreat, which is annoying. So we do actually need this Pokemon on the bench. So... Just trying to give ourselves, you know, as many options as possible. So here we're going to take a knockout, going down to four prizes, and we are on Beast Ring turns. So, okay, our opponent does have Blacephalon GX. We're going to see a Mysterious Treasure here, getting rid of an Alolan Muck. Hey, I like to see that. <laughs> uh, so, we'll have to see what they're going to do. They are going to get this Naginato up and running. Of course, they're going to be looking for Beast Rings. And we see an Erica's Hospitality, so they're going to get four cards here. Uh, they are going to be able to use Charging Up to, you know, get get energy on this Naginatal and retreat it, but they're going to need another Naginatal. Oh, man, they're actually going to need two B-Strings here. And a Naginatal or Manual Attachment for turn. Or they're going to need a B-String, two Naginatals, and a Manual Attachment. So let's see what they can get here. 
Okay, they are going to bump that Verdian Forest, going to get themselves in Ultra Space, grabbing a Naganadal from deck. So if they do have another Naganadal attachment and a B string, they can get the return KO. 210 HP, really annoying for Blacephalon to overcome here. Up here, we're just going to see a Bursting Worms. That's actually a really big whiff from our opponent. They did not find their B strings. Okay, so what do we do here? We can. I mean, luckily, we can actually still. Yeah, we can actually get the knockout with the Volcanian Prism Star, so we can use Viridian Forest. Uh, we can discard ourselves a Water Energy here. So let's see. Yeah, we don't have any in the discard, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Grab another one out of the deck, and so now we can Aqua Patch onto our Prism Star and attach return. And I think from there, I think we're just too far ahead. You know, Basephalon not being able to use B-Strings is just too much to really overcome, I think. So here we're going to go for Erica's Hospitality, just refresh our hand a little bit, and yeah, here we get the victory screen, so kind of unfortunate for our opponent there. Either way, I think we were probably going to come ahead in the exchange just because we were, we did take like the first two prize knockout, but uh, yeah, definitely an unfortunate whiff for them. But here we're going to get ourselves into another game, see what we can make happen. And we do have a Mulligan. Our opponent has a Pikachu deck box, so not sure how much that is going to tell us. This could be Pikachu Zekrom, though. Uh, you definitely run into a lot of that on PTCGO, so definitely could be a thing. And okay, so we start with a Titan All, not too bad. We have Nest Ball, Cynthia, ready to go. So not too bad of an opening hand that we have here. So yeah, we'll just click Done. And let's see what we're playing against. Okay, so probably not Pikachu Zekrom if our opponent has a Lulin Vulpix here. So, just a question of what are they playing with it. This could be like Gardevoir or something like that. It could be like Buzzwool, Ninetales, or even Zoroark. I think that's definitely a consideration. Okay, so we're going to see Umbreon and a Fairy, a Nine Ninetales, hit the discard. Okay. Um, <laughs> not sure how much that really tells us about what we're playing against. Here we're going to see an Eevee. So maybe this is like a... Like a non-GX deck with like Shrine of Punishment and stuff like that. And just forcing us to deal with like four of the Fairy of Little Ninetales. That would be annoying. Or maybe they play the the GX still, but they're just running like the one of uh, Baby One. Just for the flexibility to use that ability. I don't know, so we'll have to see what happens here. And Busted Top Deck, we get another Titan All. Uh, Nest Ball, what do we want? I think probably if we can set up Volcanium Prism Star, that's probably going to be... Good. Even Absol could be decent here, but I think I would prefer just getting the Volcanium Prism Star. Really want to power that thing up ASAP. So, just trying to think. We have Adventure Bag. What do we get? Guess we'll get the Choice Band just to thin it out of the deck. Like, right... I mean, it's, it's just weird because we don't really know what we're playing against at this point. So here, I'm just going to grab the Choice Band. Got to throw that down on Volcanium just to thin it out of the deck. We're going to put a Water Memory down. And just trying to think what do we do? We're going to get greedy. We're going to go for the Acrobikes. Uh, that's annoying. Um, I mean, I like both of those cards, just not on this turn. Or, well, I shouldn't say that, but... Uh, okay, so we can grab Articuno, discard a Water Energy. Yeah, I was thinking about just holding off on the Acrobikes just because we were going to play Cynthia. Like, I honestly, I think the responsible thing to do there would have been to just Cynthia because we'd have to shuffle those cards back in deck anyways. Uh, but you know what? We got a little greedy. Didn't quite pay off, but hey, this is PTCGO. Sometimes you can afford to get uh, a little bit greedy like that. Uh, but nevertheless, we're still having kind of an okay turn. Here we're going to Ultra Ball. really want to make sure we hit an energy off of this off of this Acrobite because we are down in attachment. We really need to make sure we can attack next turn. Okay, we do hit Aqua Patch. That basically gets us where, where we want to be because next turn we can evolve. Use Aqua Patch, and then just try to get a DCE from there. We're going to be good to go. So, again, let's see what our opponent's going to do here. We still don't exactly know what we're playing against. We know our opponent's playing a 2-2 Umbreon line at the least here. I guess they are pretty conflicted about what they, what they want to do. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe their hand's dead and they're just debating do they want to retreat and save this Vulpix or something? Oh, 
up here. They're just gonna they're just gonna literally refresh their hand a little bit here. And we're just gonna see a beacon, so slightly uneventful turn from our opponent. Let's see if they're gonna grab off beacon. That might tell us a little bit more about what we're dealing with. Okay, just another EV and another Vulpix still doesn't tell us too much. So here we can get down this Savali GX. We can Aqua Patch. And like I said, all we need now is going to be a double color synergy, and we're going to be good to go here. Oh, geez. That is that is not a great hand. So let's see what we have in discard. None of those Pokemon are useful. So unfortunately, we might just have to pass. That's definitely a big whiff that we have here. You know, I didn't really take uh, a good peek through the deck whenever we used Nest Ball, but maybe we have some Energy Prize. That would definitely explain it. Because we saw a lot of cards on our first turn, and that in conjunction with this turn, we really haven't seen any energy. We saw one energy that we got rid of with an Acrobike, but that's been it. And we play 12 energy total, so statistically we should have seen some. So I'm guessing we do have some prize this game. So our opponent has a couple of Umbreon set up. Again, still really not sure what we're playing against. We're seeing Ultra Ball here. Getting rid of a Lele. Okay, so they do play other Pokemon. And they are going to start getting a Ninetales up and running. This actually could be really annoying for us because we have our Volcanium Prism Star, of course. We also have our Tight Nulls, but we don't really have many great attackers. Uh, Volcanium is definitely going to have to do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. But here we're just going to see a retreat into Ninetales and then just... Okay, we're going to see an Erica for three. And we're going to see a Retaliate for 30. Okay, so our opponent's at least not putting on too much pressure of their own here. And what do we do? We just bench Lele, I guess. And just go for a Cynthia. Or we could like Ultra Ball, Stretcher, like Lily or something like that. We can do that too. I don't think we're going to need both of those. Here we'll grab the Magirna. So we'll do that. And we'll just go ahead and we'll do Erica. That'll give us one extra card. Alright, so no double colorless energy, but we do at least finally find another water energy, though. So, it's better than nothing, I guess. Just trying to think what we do. We could just put it on Savali. We could get greedy, put it on Volcanion, and start setting up to attack with that. That basically puts our Savali just like a DCE away from attacking still. So, but we're going to go for that. We're behind on energy tap chance. So we really just need to make sure we can attack next turn. We are, you know, two turns behind attacking at this point, which feels bad. So just another pass, but luckily, like I said, our opponent's deck really isn't putting on too much pressure. It looks to be very re reactionary with this, you know, this Umbreon in play. Uh, it has that retaliate attack. It's 30 plus 90 if we took a knockout on their last turn. So here, just another 30, not even a supporter. And man, this, <laughs> this is so bad. These lilies are clunking up this deck bad. Uh, luckily, we can at least put down this water memory. And, and get it out of the hand. We can always get it back with the Magir if we choose to. Just trying to think, what do we do here? So I'm kind of hesitant to evolve this Type Null. So I think what we do, we're just going to go for the Lele here. That way we can grab ourselves a Cynthia. This hand is way too clunky. Our odds of hitting an energy off these Lilies is pretty poor. So we're just going to go for the Cynthia. We could have evolved the Silvalli, played the Stretcher, but then that would have left us with only this Volcanion as an attack. I really don't want to evolve this Titan. I really want to save it to maybe have to attack into the Ninetales at some point. But here what we can do, we're going to use Change Clothes. We can get... Uh, we're going to pick up this Water Memory. Just in case our opponent does target it down, I want to be able to maybe use that on a different Silvalli at some point. So here we can get down... Probably just get down the fighting memory in case of like a let loose or something. We really don't want to see that. Uh, we don't need that to take knockouts on any of these Umbreons. So here we are going to get a double chorus energy. So that would explain why we are, you know, having some trouble finding energy. Uh, we did prize at least one. So here we are going to see a fairy alone like this. Okay, I actually do like seeing that because that's going to give us two more prizes to potentially get here. So we have three prizes on board total. We have to find another two. Um, outside of this Aloha Nine Tails. So, any free prizes we can get are definitely going to be appreciated. So, we're going to see a Nest Ball and a switch off of this Aloha Nine Tails. Where are they going to get with Nest Ball? Okay, 
I guess they're not going to play just a retaliate for 120. I am fine with that. So here we can get down a water energy onto our Volcanium Prism Star. And here I'm actually going to bench Articuno and save our Silvalli GX. So what we can do, we can use that ability, Legendary Ascent, take all that energy off of our Silvalli GX, and we can just knock out this Umbreon for 130, you know, making it a little bit tougher for our opponent to get a knockout. So here we can put down Water Memory just to thin out the hand and use Lily to draw some more cards. Okay. So I think I want to hang on to this hand. We could play the Verdian Forest just to thin it, but I really don't think we need to play it. Also don't know what our opponent's playing. If they're playing Black Market Prism Star or something like that, I actually kind of want to hang on to this thing. So we are going to find yet again another energy out of the discard or out of our prizes, so it's all starting to make sense to me now. <laughs> so let's see. So our opponent is going to play Nest Ball. So maybe they're going for another uh, Eevee here to do the whole... Okay. All right, that's uh, that's interesting. <laughs> Alrighty, so yeah, we're gonna see some B strings, and this actually feels pretty bad because I don't think we can actually knock out this Guzzlord. As sad as that is, and they are gonna go for a Guzma, knocking out our Savali GX. That feels bad so they must kind of realize the threat of it but at the same time we can use cold crush gx just to get rid of all this energy in play so i don't feel too bad about doing that so will you top deck another savali gx that's going to be good we can nest ball potentially so we could do that um let's see what we have in deck okay so we do have another uh tight null actually might like that. Yeah, the question is, which one do we evolve? So I'm just trying to think. We might need to attack with the Titanol at some point, but at the same time, if we evolve this damaged one, that could make it easier for our opponent to actually get a knockout on our Chevalier GX. So definitely in a weird spot, but here we are definitely going to get this Fighting Memory back to hand. We are desperately going to need that. So, yeah, we'll attach here. So, I kind of like this because right now I think we're actually in a spot where we don't even have to worry about this uh, Nine Tails on the bench too much. So, I actually just want to prefer to just set up this, this uh, fresh one if possible. So, here we're going to use Cold Crush GX, discarding all energy from both active Pokemon. Usually pretty annoying, but luckily we have Silvalli GX to freely retreat on our next turn. But we're still in a weird situation where we are on B-String turns. So if our opponent is able to B-String uh, twice yet again and attach, we actually just lose, which is pretty unexpected, I have to say. <laughs> so we're going to see a Nest Ball here. And yeah, if they keep playing Pokemon, I'm definitely not worried about these. Definitely not worried about that Alola Ninetales uh, anymore. Uh, this Guzzlord definitely what was a pain for us. Using that GX attack to take four prizes was pretty insane. So just from that, and if they're able to knock out one more GX, they can actually just win, which feels really bad. Oh, but here, I guess they whiffed what they needed, so that's going to be good for us. We can get back into this game here. We can evolve this Silvalli GX. We have our double chorus energy. We can use Fighting Memory. And then from there, we can just Ultra Ball. Definitely going to bring that guy up. Get our opponent off Beast Ring turns. And then from there, I honestly feel pretty good about the state of this match. So yeah, all we have to do is Turbo Drive. We can do that. And now we can start setting up this Volcanium Prism Star to hopefully clean up this game. Because kind of my game plan here is we can go for a two-shot on this Ninetales GX. But more than likely, we're going to try to uh, pick off a of Vulpix with Sauna Blast, and that will actually set up the Aloha Ninetales with bench damage uh, to be Sauna Blasted away for the return KO. So I actually think we have this game now. But, I mean, our opponent's been playing all sorts of other weird stuff up until this point, so not even sure. Um, so maybe they have something else that could catch us by surprise. So here we're actually just going to use Jet Geyser here. And, well could Ultra Ball. Just trying to think, what do we do? What do we do? So 
so yeah i kind of like this because even if they promote the nine tails we can always swing on it and then guzma it up on the next turn hopefully because we have two more guzmas in deck we can play our hand down pretty low and lily into it hopefully but here they are going to give us the vulpix i'm fine with that so we can we can't overdrive but i think we need to retreat here and use sauna blast because the 20 damage is actually really relevant so here we'll get rid of a, a lily and a fighting memory and just double check, and we do have two Guzmas, like I said. So we can put this Viridian Forest in play. Not really too worried about our opponent's stadiums at this point. So we can go for a Lily here. Oh, actually, we, we still have an attached. We probably should have done that in hindsight. But, you know, it's still not the end of the world. I mean, even though we didn't even hit the Guzma we needed... So here we're going to attach to our Lele there. So we'll Aqua Patch onto this guy. And it's, yeah, I guess it's not the end of the world this way either because we do have another energy to use Jet Geyser as well on the next turn if we do want to go that route. So yeah, we just promote our Volcanian here. We'll burn the DCE since we have another one in hand already. And sure, we'll use Change Clothes. We'll get that Water Memory back to hand, just in case we do want to pull off some Aqua Patch shenanigans at some point as well. So, yeah, we'll just go for a Sauna Blast here, taking a knockout on Vulpix. And like I said, we've softened that Nine Tails up to where we're at a point where uh, a Sauna Blast can actually just knock it out. Nothing our opponent can really promote at this point is going to be safe. Uh, I mean, if they do promote the Nine Tails, we technically can't knock that out this turn. Oh, but here we get the victory screen. Like I said, guys, after taking out the Guzzlord, I think that put us in a really good position to actually win that game. Uh, but we're going to hop into one more and see what we can make happen here. We see an, a Lone Ninetales coin, so maybe another deck featuring a Lone Ninetales. And, okay, this is a pretty workable hand. We have so that, or we have a Titan we have a Lele, we can grab ourselves a Lily. And, okay, so a Vulpix, yet again, that unfortunately doesn't tell us too much about what we're playing against. So this could be Gardevoir, could be another Guzzlord uh, deck like that. Let's see, we do have... Looks like we have all of our important Pokemon in the deck. We have both Fighting Memories, we have Water Memories in hand, so I think we're okay here. Actually, you know what we should have done? We actually probably should have Acrobiked first here. That actually probably was a misplay. Ooh, that's... That's pretty rough. Um, but I think we have to take the Prism Star. But yeah, we should have Acrobite first just because that would have increased our odds of hitting a Water Energy off of it. Uh, using the Viridian Force first, then went out of deck, so it actually made it harder for us to hit what we wanted to. So, slight sequencing error, guys. I do apologize about that. But definitely is important what order you do these things in. So here we are going to go for a Tapu Lele. We can grab ourselves a Lily. And even though we don't know what we're playing against, I don't mind too much throwing this Water Memory down, potentially. Here, we can attach... Uh, actually, should probably do the Water Energy. We don't know what we're playing against. Our opponent could play Enhanced Hammer or something like that. So, we'll go for the Water Memory. Uh, play the Lily. Find another Titan All. Okay, so we actually have a pretty, pretty good little first turn here. And from there, might just hit done. Don't really need too much else. Could play the Acrobite, but we don't really need anything else this turn. I want to save that to dig one card deeper next turn. So we do see a Pokemon Communication. And, okay, so I'm pretty sure with Pokemon Communication, you have to reveal the card that you're putting back into your deck. That's really weird. Huh. Yeah, maybe I'll have to reread it, but I'm pretty confident you do have to show your opponent that you are putting a Pokemon back in your deck. So, kind of a weird thing there on PTCO. But anyways, uh, we are playing against, looks like a Kingdra deck. So I'm assuming this is Kingdra GX if they are playing Wishful Baton, since the other Kingdra only attacks for single energies. Okay, so they're probably playing a Alolan Ninetales in here to get out their rare candies. And we're going to see a Squirtle as well, so probably the Blastoise from Team Up. So, a bunch of cute stuff here. And what do we do? We can play Acrobike. I really want to hit a Supporter off of this Acrobike. That way we can use Ultra Ball. And nice, we do hit one. So it kind of hurts if we get rid of a Water Energy like that. But at the same time, I think we need the Cynthia because now we can Ultra Ball for a uh, Savali GX and take a knockout on this Vulpix. So here we'll attach 
that. Ultra Ball, we'll get rid of both of the water energies, that's fine. And we'll evolve here. Just trying to think, do we want to put anything else down? We could put the water energy, or I'm sorry, water memory down on Titan Null. That's a thing too. Or might even consider putting on the choice band. Just to give us a, like a little bit of flexibility over like what we want to what we want to do here. So I think that's fine if we want to do that. Just I mean, I don't know how impactful choice band is gonna be. Well, I guess it could be because if they have four bench Pokemon, a Rebel GX with a choice band actually would knock them out. So that doesn't seem terrible. And what do we do? What do we do? I'm just trying to think, do we bench the Absol? I kind of want to, just because if our opponent doesn't have like the Kingdra and they find um, another Vulpix, they will have to commit an additional energy to this Horsey to retreat it. So just in case they whiff what they need, uh, Absol actually could hurt here. So we're going to go for Turbo Drive, setting up this Volcanium Prism Star. Now, one thing is annoying, our opponent does have these Wishful Batons that could be pretty annoying for us at some point. And our opponent is going to get down a Squirtle, and they do have the Rare Candy, so a little bit annoying. Kind of wish I would have saved the Absol uh, in that case, but I think we, I think it's probably still the right play. So, double Rare Candy, that certainly feels bad here. We're going to see them get rid of a Water Energy with our own Viridian Forest. Uh, luckily, it's going to take a few energy for this Kingdra to get in like one shot range of us, but at the same time, I'm not worried too much just because, you know, we have Articuno GX at some point. We can potentially use Cold Crush that will unfortunately eliminate the, the option of Rebel GX, but we do have some ways of dealing with like a really fat Kingdra here if we need to. And we're going to see Erica's Hospitality. And we're going to see a Squirtle, and our opponent is going to Nest Ball, so that's actually pretty good for us. We can knock out a clean Kingdra here. So we can do that, but at the same time... The only thing I don't like about that is that we're going to put two energy, basically, on the other Kingdra. And if we're taking a one-shot or using... Basically, if we're using our GX attack... On a on a Kingdra, I want it to be after they've already used Wishful Baton. Like ideally, we would knock out this one and then use Rebel GX on their other Kingdra um, to clear all the energy off that. So I might hmm. like taking two prizes feels good, but I think what I might do here is we're going to uh, take a cheap prize on Vulpix. One reason I want to do that is uh, this can potentially eliminate the odds of or option of them. Evolving into Nine Tails, finding rare candies to get a Blastoise up and running as well. And also, there's like some weird things that the math does here. Uh, like I mentioned in the deck profile of this video, this actually does like set up Lele to where we can Guzma it and take a knockout with the uh, Type Null with a Choice Band at some point. So I think kind of our path to victory is going to be we're going to use Rebel on a Kingdra and then we Guzma up a, a Lele to just win from there. So here we can promote Lele. Has free retreat thanks to our Silvalli GX. So let's see, what do we do? What do we do? Um, now, the one thing that is awkward right now is we can't actually get a knockout on this Kingdra with our Savali GX. So I kind of wish they would have benched something else there, but maybe it's our fault for like playing into them not having a full bench now. So I think what we do here... Uh, this is frustrating. We're, we're in kind of a, a tricky spot at this point. So if we attach to the bench one, our other Savali goes down. And then we... Mm, yes, yeah, tricky. I, unfortunately, I think I want to just... Ah, this is tricky. I think we're just going to energy drive here, setting up the two-shot on this Kingdra. So that feels pretty bad. I actually kind of wish we would have gotten a knockout there so maybe in hindsight we should have like gone the route to just rebel uh that kingdra last turn but i don't know at the same time we'd be on odd prizes at that point they could have potentially gotten out blastoise so i don't know i, I still think we could potentially make this happen our opponent is no doubt going to go down to three prizes this turn but when they do it's going to be on this um 
you know, it's gonna be with this Kingdra that's like heavily damaged, we're gonna go down to two prizes, and I think we're gonna be like one turn ahead enough to be able to win this game still. So your opponent is gonna get down another bench Pokemon. I am definitely cool with that. Seems good to me. So we can promote Absol. And we can get down our DCE there. We actually have a couple different like paths to victory, I think, at this point. We could have even like stretchered the Lele and taken an, a knockout with that. But then uh, that feels bad because if they lose my, our Silvalli GX, we're in bad in a bad spot. So here we're gonna Ultra Ball. What do we get rid of? Probably get rid of a Cynthia, I would imagine. Maybe even the Aqua Patch. Like I don't know how much it's gonna be useful, but it always feels bad to get rid of those. <laughs> so we're gonna grab a Silvalli GX just to to try to protect this Titan with the Choice Band here. That's gonna be really important for us to close out this game. But here, I actually might sit on this hand because what we can do is we can just retreat with the active into the active um, or retreat the active into this Silvalli GX that's damaged. Use Turbo Drive for knockout. And then next turn, we have Stretcher to potentially Guzma up this Lele and knock it out with our bench Silvalli GX. So we're going to do that. Taking two more prizes in the process feels pretty nice as well. And so yeah, our opponent has a thick <laughs> Kingdra now. That was that like six energy. Uh, so it looks like five energy here. So we are going to see a rescue stretcher. Do they have a Guzma? Because if they Guzma this uh, Savali GX on the bench, that feels pretty bad. But at the same time, we still have stretcher, so we can actually still just Guzma up Lele and use Rebel GX on that. So either way, I'm pretty sure we have game loss. Our opponent has a Mars Shadow or a Judge or something like that. So we're just going to see a Hydro Pump here taking a knockout on the Savali GX, and I think we have game. So we can just promote this guy. We don't even need to promote the Absol. And here, just double check in. Uh, yeah, because we have Choice Band, Rebel GX will actually be enough to knock out Kingdra. So, yep, yeah, we nearly take a victory against this Kingdra GX here. Uh, or this Kingdra GX deck, I should say, here. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this look at Silvalli GX. Definitely has some cool new tricks from uh, Team Up. Pretty fun deck. Not sure how competitive it actually is, but definitely cool to, you know, knock the dust off some of these old cards and, you know, try them out in some games again. But anyways, guys, as usual, feel free to like and subscribe. And if you can, consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or by picking up some merch from our online store, rarecandytcg.com. It would mean a lot. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.